And I'm here to talk to you today about is this miracle of creating a solution to the need for housing in the world. And I think a lot of us here aren't suffering that, but so it's really for our children and their children and for so many people on the planet. And, you know, shelter is number one. It's the highest priority on the list of human needs. In researching for this talk, I was amazed at the numbers. Uh, according to Wikipedia, nearly two million people in this country are homeless. Globally, it's 1.5 billion people are without adequate housing. That's five times the entire population of the United States. A middle class family will spend the best years of their lives working to pay for the roof over their heads. And we claim to be the most intelligent life form on planet Earth. Most of God's creatures build their homes instinctually with little time and effort. You don't see the birds and bees enslaved to a mortgage. <laughs> Yet here in the land of the free and the home of the brave, 50,000 of our brave veterans are homeless living in the streets. I know we can do a lot better. I was born a builder. My dad was an inventor, and he taught me at a very young age that anything is possible. If I ever uttered the words, but dad, I can't, he would stop me and say, son, there's no such word as can't. I went on and studied engineering at SDSU and then had a successful career as a designer builder. And uh, I love building, but I love Mother Nature even more. And I was, like probably so many of you, I was profoundly affected by the writings of my great uncle, Khalil Gibran. Would that I could gather your houses into my hand, and like a sower, scatter them in forest and meadow. Would the valleys were your streets and the green paths your alleys, that you might seek one another through vineyards and come with the fragrance of the earth in your garments? Well, it was a great big wake-up call for me in my 30s when I realized that I was working in an industry that was destroying our ecosystems. The old-growth forests that I held as sacred were being mowed down, and all the countless species that depended on them. I simply couldn't go on without a solution, and I didn't have a solution then. So I changed my life, and I dedicated myself to doing whatever I could to keep the spirit of Gibran alive, at least within my own heart. But backstage, my mind was ceaselessly searching for the solution. Then when I was building the Gibran Center, I've got a picture here, I built our meditation dome out of clay bricks and cinder blocks. It was the lowest priced material in the area. And uh, it was very inexpensive to build and it just turned out so beautiful. And then my brother-in-law came along and asked me to help him build his dream host. He always dreamt of having a hobbit house. And um, so we built this. And the pictures of Steve's dome home inspired people all over the world. And their enthusiasm inspired us. But there was a problem. Clay br bricks and cinder blocks offered no insulation value. So it was really impractical for a big part of the world. And my vision was to solve the problem for the world. And I needed a better material. So uh, I enrolled in a research project at the University of YouTube. And <laughs> <laughs> and when I discovered Aircrete, I felt like I was a miner who'd been digging in the dirt for decades. And at last, I struck gold. Aircrete is a lightweight insulating material that has the amazing qualities of concrete. 
I'll just put it in here so you can see. It's, um, you know, like concrete, it's low maintenance. It, um, you know, does, it's not harmed by water. It resists mold. It doesn't rot or decay. Matter of fact, it grows stronger with time. It's impervious to termites and insects and rodents and pests. And of course, it's completely fireproof. And because its main ingredient is air, it's very inexpensive to build and ecological. So um, it's been around for a long time, actually. It was even signs that it was used in the Roman Empire, but then for thousands of years, or more than a thousand years, the, the recipe was lost and then reinvented again in Scandinavia about 100 years ago. But it's been really slow to make its way into the US. The companies that do offer it will charge more for it because it's a specialty product. Special, large, heavy, industrial equipment, expensive equipment, and costly foaming agents. And so this is where we come in. After some years of experimenting and testing different foaming agents and perfecting our equipment, we developed a simple way low-cost way of making aircrete using dish detergent to make the foam. <laughs> and the equipment weighs less than 30 pounds and will fit in a suitcase. And if you can make pancake batter, you can make aircrete. It's really that simple. It's like mixing up flour and water and adding a little whipping cream and letting it set overnight. Now there is, uh, you know, com it has a lot of compression strength. You, know, you can drive a car on it but it's very brittle, so you know, it breaks easily. And the lighter weight you make it, the more brittle it is. It's one thing they say about concrete, it will crack, and aircrete is even more brittle. And so what we do is we laminate a layer of fabric on the surface, some reinforcing fabric, which makes a composite material that has both the tensile strength and compression strength. And it's a lot like sheetrock. And I brought a piece of sheetrock with me just because I really want you to understand this because this is kind of revolutionary. You know, there's no one building like this, except we build the interior walls of our, of our you know, modern buildings with this material. And it's made of gypsum, which like aircrete is very brittle, has no tensile strength. Because a thin layer of paper is glued to the surface, you know, it's strong. It doesn't, you know, it doesn't break easily. But if you just simply make a thin cut through the, through the paper, there's no strength in it. And so we're, this is the way we're building our dome homes. It's very inexpensive, but it actually has a lot of structural integrity. We sandwich the aircrete between these layers of reinforcing fabric. And unlike gypsum and paper, which are destroyed if they get wet, aircrete and the reinforcing fabric aren't harmed by water and they won't rot or, rot or decay. They literally could last for centuries. You could actually make a swimming pool out of this structurally reinforced aircrete. And if your house is soaked in a flood or a hurricane, there's really no damage done to the basic structure. Now, how many of you here remember what you learned from the three little pigs in kindergarten? <laughs> what happens if you build your house out of sticks? Right, the big bad wolf blows it down, right? Well, the aftermath, oh, I think I have a picture here to show you. Yes, the aftermath of the hurricanes had show us clearly what Mother Nature thinks of our stick frame houses. <laughs> what I want to propose is that instead of stick frame houses, we build structurally reinforced aircrete dome homes that aren't going to get blown down by the big bad wolf or destroyed in a flood, or consumed by a fire. A structurally reinforced aircrete dome home is much more durable and costs but a small fraction of conventional housing. A dome home is a safe home. And it's no wonder that they cover 
some of our most prominent buildings, like the US Capitol, state capitals, churches, cathedrals, mosques, and temples. Architects and engineers have known for centuries that a dome home, a dome is the strongest structure to withstand the forces of nature. The Pantheon has been defying gravity for over 2,000 years. It's the largest non-reinforced concrete dome. And I, you know, uh, it, it's really a testament that a well-designed dome doesn't even need reinforcement. And I want you to try this at home. Before you crack your egg in the frying pan for breakfast, put it in your hand, end to end, you know, long ways, and lock your fingers, and with all, <laughs> oh. Well, you know what? I've been doing this so many times every breakfast to make sure. And every time I'm amazed, you know, this must have gotten cracked when it was set down on the table. Because you try it at home, you can't break it. Well, the joke's on me. But, you know, nature loves domes because they're so strong. <laughs> now, I really go home and try this, because <laughs> I want you to have that experience. <laughs> Not this one. <laughs> yeah, domes are aerodynamic, and you know, they're, they're super strong. And uh, you know, every living thing from the tiny little cells in our body to the mighty Mother Earth herself is surrounded by an electromagnetic energy field. And when you put your energy field in a box, you limit its functionality. You naturally feel more alive in a dome. Now, of course, you know, with modern technology, 3D printing, fabric forming, and special molding processes, there's, you know, the possibilities are endless what we can do with this material. And as an engineer, I've always assumed that would be the direction I would go. But I'm discovering something so magical with these workshops we've been doing that, um, you know, as children, we all love stacking and balancing blocks. And when we come together and build like this, it's just so much fun and so satisfying. I mean, aircrete is so lightweight and easy to work with. No one ever works up a sweat, and it's, it's amazing. And um, I think I might have even a picture here of what's going on here. Yeah, you know, we use these um, compass arms, we call them, that tell us where to position the blocks. There we're just putting the window with the fabric form or the reinforcing fabric around it. And um, yeah, anyway, we just have such a great time. Um, you know, applying the fabric is like putting on paper mache. And the sense of community that's created out of that, I realize that, you know, this simple, basic kind of grassroots method is maybe more practical and more essential for really what needs to happen because we so much need to reconnect with each other and create community. And our, our workshops are bringing people together from all over the world. We had 35 people from 14 different countries at the first workshop. And as we build, we build friendships. And out of our friendships, miracles begin to happen. The first workshop, we built a dome for a school in Mexico in last February, and now in December, we're going back to build what may be the first sustainable orphanage in collaboration with our new friends from the Earthship Academy. In July, we met some leaders of a veterans movement, and now in November, we're launching the Yes Academy. It's a healing center founded by doctors who served in Afghanistan. We recently taught a group of kids how to make a Aircrete pizza oven. And, uh, you know, 
Who knows what they're going to do with the enthusiasm that they went away with? We'll find out. And um, we just broke ground, actually, the last week on our new Dome Gaia off-grid training center right on the ocean in, on a remote part of the Big Island, Hawaii. And it's a great test site because of its exposure to the hurricanes and tsunamis that hit there. And it's also lava zone one, the most likely to be covered in molten lava. So we're going to really be able to put the aircrete through a test there. <laughs> you know, worst case scenario, we'll just end up with some really cool underground Air Creek caverns. <laughs> yeah, and uh, you know, if we can build heaven on earth anywhere, we can do it in Hawaii. We're collaborating with a native Hawaiian organization called Aloha in Action. And um, we're, you know, we want to teach the Hawaiian people how to build, because the way they're building there is so impractical for that climate. And we want everyone to learn. I see a time when people will learn at a very young age. So by the, t by the time they're of age, when they're going to leave their home, leave their mother's and father's homes, all their friends and family will just get together. It'll be one of the highlights of their life, like a ceremony or ritual, and we we'll build a home for them. And when it's done, the mother and father will say, now go to your womb. <laughs> So, you know, it's, it's, it's like uh, Victor Hugo said, there's nothing so powerful as an idea whose time has come. And this is an idea that promises to satisfy our most basic human need in a low-cost, elegant way at a time when that need is so great. I want us all to learn so that we can all be as free as the birds and the bees to make our dreams come true. Now we know the way. Now it's time to live it. Aloha.